Today there is a new method for learning harmony, counterpoint and partimento. Totally practical, that will make every single thing more clear. Totally smart, perfect for those who are embarking on this adventurous journey. Totally challenging for having fun while learning. I'm Ricardus, a Musicus Practicus and all this is what you are going to experience on my channel. Concerning the augmented fourth, that is the tied or syncopated bass that does not return to the same tone. This is the opposite situation than the previous rule by Durante. In this case we have the fourth, this one A D sharp, that doesn't return to the previous note because we have a turn at the place of a semitone in the bass. It goes down and then we have the cadence, the 7-7 seven, seven cadence. So in this case, it's really simple because we have to make the stand, the uh, method 4 to um, follow by a 6 chord and then 7-7 seven, seven cadence. So, when we have the semitone and then the four, two four chord, the the fourth must return up. But when we have a tone, like in all these examples, we're gonna to practice. We gonna practice now. The tone wants to be down to to go down. So. Let's do the same in, in um, D major because this is the fourth degree, so G. Imagine the melody. This. If you have two voices in your mind, this is one of the most important tricks in Partimento. If you have a bass and if you visualize at least one voice, the most important one, it's really much easier to um, identify and to play the other voices that make the harmony. If I have in my mind the main counter subject. So the same in A major. Let's write the main melody. So three, four, six, seven, three, eight. So three, four, six, seven, three, eight. This way. We can play this as a top voice or as a middle voice. When you have the main melody in your mind, it's really all more simple. Then the same in F sharp major. So let's write the structural counter subject that is three, so D sharp, then E sharp the fourth, the sharp and fourth, then the sixth, that becomes the seventh, F sharp, of course, and then E sharps, that is the leading tone of F sharp major. So let's play the structural melody. Oh yes, of course, uh, 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 we are in uh, F sharp minor because we have the natural A. So, Structural melody is in the middle voice. Now let's play the structural 
counter subject, let's call it this way, the, the structural counter subject, or more simple, more simply the counter subject in the upper voice. I said that it's really simple is you have in your mind the second melody because usually the other note is or a third okay if you're playing a third with the um, in the counter subject it will be another note for example a fifth or an octave eight then we have the two four six chords so we have the two the four and the two then we have the six so we have a third has a as the third voice then we have the seven so we need a third so we have the third then we have the third so we can use another co consonant or dissonance this way a seventh and play the resolution so when we have the third we play another interval when we don't have the third we play the third or in the in the case we have the uh, four we can we play the two because in the two four six chord because of the three numbers, of the three, um, two, four, and six chord, three double number. How, how can, uh, how do you say, you can um, party in, uh, in in English? I have, uh, I don't remember now. So, for example, three is an odd number. What? Yes, three is an odd number. Odd. Odd and even numbers. Even, even, exactly, exactly. Even. Yeah, even divisible by two. Exactly. Yeah. Because we we have three even numbers. Thank you, <laughs> Luke. It's impossible for us having now a third when we have the two, four, three chord. It sounds really strange. If you remember the other chord with the four and the six is six, four, three, but without the two, because three, two, three. This is more like a cluster or something that must be resolved as um, suspension. But it's really, it's really, it's really strange in baroque harmony. So let's move on to the next um, bass. We are in C sharp minor. So the structure we have uh, three. Four, six, seven, three, eight. And now, so yes, let's write the melody. This way, this is our structural melody. And let's play it now in the middle. This way, so uh, this is a sharp. Simple. The next one is in G major, so let's write the structural melody. But now you are a master in this exercise if you think the structural melody. This way. Now in the middle. Yes. With diminutions. And with imitations, so. really possible to apply different styles, patterns and figuration on this bass in major and uh, even in, and in minor too. So let's recap the previous one. So yes. We are we are in F minor so in C sharp minor to finish in a with a major third then next example C major so really really simple this 
way. Yes. In a triple time like in a jiga. major starting with a B flat so let's write the melody three three four six seventh three eight this for example let's imagine this in a style for example of an allemand and this is the pattern with the Alemanda style applied. Now B flat measures, major starting with the E flat because this pattern brings us from the fourth degree to the first one. So three five chord, three, four, six, seven, seven. Yes, seven, three. Let's write it. Yes. Exactly. As the top voice. And has the middle voice. And the last example, no, oh yes, the last two examples are in D major and A major. So let's go very quickly because now you have already understood how to do it. Structural melody, structural counter subject, this way. And yes, because this finishes on the E, on the D, and the following one starts on the D, we can play this as only one exercise. Let's try this possibility. So, three sharp, four, six, seven, three, eight, this way. Yes, actually, this is in uh, D minor, but yes, D minor and A minor, not major, my bad. And then for continuing, we need the F sharp here. So we have to finish on this chord with the three sharp. For example. Imagine, for example, a trio sonata, we can have the first violin playing something, a melody on the first bass in D minor. And now the second violin plays the imitation at the upper fifth, so D, A, on the same bass, but a fifth up. Let's play them together. This is a good way for playing imitation when you have a three voice uh, texture like in a trio sonata. Today, choosing the best method for learning composition and improvisation is not so simple. 
it's very important to follow an effective, specific and powerful method, in which each exercise is directly aimed at improving a specific technique. Today, a solution exists, it's called Improvisation Elements. Every week there are new exclusive high-level videos that allow you to improve your skills in composition, improvisation and music theory. In these videos I guide you, I show you the exercise and you repeat after me. By practicing these simple exercises every week, in a few months you will make a huge leap in skill. Now it's up to you, when do you start? Join my pattern and challenge yourself. If you are looking for a familiar place where you can learn and share everything about Partimenti, today it exists. Get to know enthusiasts like you from all over the world, learn from all your future friends and share your skill with them. Join Partimates, the Discord server entirely dedicated to Partimenti improvisation and composition.